It's uh, very strange for me to be here in an uh, aquaculture conference. Uh, if anyone uh, told me like 10 years ago that I would be holding a presentation for feed components in an aquaculture setting, well, uh, I would say that we're joking. Uh, my name is uh, Geir Henning Winterwald. I'm the CEO of Finfjord, and uh, we had no intentions of entering the aquaculture industry whatsoever. But uh, in came University of Tromsø in 2015, and suddenly we were in a project that was supposed to remove CO2 from the off gases from our beautiful fur silicon plant located in Senja community. Happily, Senja community is also like a big aquaculture community, so I'm not a stranger to aquaculture, but um, I had no intentions of joining uh, that sector at all. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to say that uh, we have a project uh, that is about to take process emissions that will be like smoke uh, together with uh, light and then produce uh, 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 salmon feed, which is quite strange. So what you look at the picture behind me is uh, what we engineers call process emissions. I think that you would call it smoke. Uh, in that smoke, uh, there's a lot of dust. That dust we remove, we call it silica, and we actually sell it for around uh, 30, 50 million kroners a year. Uh, in that smoke, there's also heat that we energy recover. Uh, and in addition, something you can't see, that's CO2, uh, and it's quite a lot of it, around 300,000 tons. So our claim is that we can recycle <coughs> these 300,000 tons of CO2. We can make 100,000 tons of algae, which then can be uh, salmon feed. And uh, in addition to that, it will improve the health of the fish and also re reduce the uh, lice problem uh, of uh, fish farming. That's the biggest claim of today, isn't it? I think it's... Uh... <laughs> and who are we that comes with this kind of claims? Well, we have no idea what, uh, uh, what it looks like inside of uh, uh, salmon uh, or aquaculture. We produce ferrous silicon, which is an industry. Uh, that's a metal that we use for, for producing steel. But we have come quite far in actually looking at what's in our off-gases. So today we have like 50% of the value creation comes from actually off-gases. Because that's free. Because all the costs that we have in producing ferrous silicon is absorbed for the metal. And then what we can take out of the off gases is a pure profit. So this, the silica, which is like the dust in the smoke, uh, we make money on. We make money on the heat. And also now we're going to start to think uh, of making money of the CO2, which is a huge problem in the industry, of course. Uh, the reason we're doing that is that in 2008, we started on the quest of becoming the world's first CO2-free uh, first silicon producer. And we've been working with a lot of different strategies towards getting uh, CO2 neutrality. And uh, believe me, in the beginning, there was no strategies that led towards uh, uh, salmon or cultivation at all. But this was the, the beginning. And um, that's like close to 20 years ago. And these are the different, let's say, uh, areas that we can uh, work along to get uh, climate neutrality. One is energy efficiency which we have come quite a far away. I think we are the most energy efficient ferrari producers in the world. Uh, two, we can substitute fossil carbon uh, with biological carbon, and then we reduce emissions. Uh, and then we have this, the post-combustion technologies, which we can divide into carbon capture and utilization and carbon capture and storage. And then the algae cultivation falls in the CCU. CCS is like a waste treatment of uh, CO2, which might be available also in the future. But we have been focusing on CCU because it will generate uh, uh, algae, which can be a valuable asset to make, make sure that the costs of becoming climate neutral can be zero or uh, more optimistically uh, positive. And it's been, let's, let's say if carb carbon neutrality becomes profitable, then there's a lot of other um, uh, ferrari producers that would like to follow us as well. And the reason we are focusing on the CCU is that we are in a very, very fierce competition with ferrari producers throughout the world. So this is a picture in Kazakhstan. Uh, they have a lot of carbon in the ground. In Europe, we are closing all the mines, so it's very difficult for us to get coal. 
uh, other places in the world it's very readily available. Just dig it out of the, of the ground and when you have uh, coal you have cheap raw materials and also you have cheap electricity. So the, and in addition they don't have any CO2 emission costs. Today we are paying around 80 to 100 million kroners per year on emission fees. And if we have to pay like for 100% of our emissions in the future, it's going to be with an emission cost around 100 euros, around 300 million a year. At the same time competing against uh, 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 these companies. So of course we need to become more carbon uh, efficient. And we have a goal, uh, or Europe has set the goal, we're going to be carbon free in 2050. I heard the goal of the aquaculture was to, uh, to uh, fivefold the, the, the production by 2050, so we have complementary goals. So if we can actually take all this uh, CO2 from the industry, convert, turn, uh, convert it into algaes, then uh, we have um, a common ground, at least there. Well, I get a lot of questions about the sustainability of this, because this is recycling uh, fossil carbon. So I made like a very, very, very detailed explanation of what's actually going on. So here we have a system of a ferrous silicon producer uh, and a, a, a salmon producer. We produce 100,000 tons of ferrous silicon, emit around 350,000 tons of, uh, of CO, or 350,000 tons of CO2. Um, that amount of CO2 can generate algae that can uh, feed 130,000 tons of uh, salmon, which today will emit around 330,000 tons of CO2. Like it's um, don't get too detailed into the numbers. It's just a concept. So this system emits around 680,000 tons. So what happens if we capture all the CO2 today and turn it into algae? Is that 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 if you go physically and look at our factory, there is no CO2 from that factory. The food that you used to feed the uh, initial uh, salmon, you don't need that anymore because now you can feed it from the algae that we have produced. So the benefit now is that you have uh, reduced the output with 330,000 tons. A quite significant reduction. That's only by using one, let's say, of the techniques that we showed before. If you add biocarbon into this, it gets better. Because let's say if we use 40% biocarbon, today we use 15%, we are going to go up to 25%, then that this reduction is going to be even stronger. Because then, if you add biocarbon in the ferrosilicon process, you will benefit in the ferrosilicon and also in the uh, salmon uh, production. And we can technically go 100% biological. And then the, uh, the, the reduction of CO2 will be close to 700,000 tons. And Norway emits around 5 million tons of CO2. So it's a big, big, big uh, amount in Norway. So that means that you will have a sustainable silicon production and sustainable uh, salmon production as well. Clearly like a win-win situation. The good news here is that uh, we've come quite far. Uh, we are now operating what we think is the world's biggest photo bioreactor in, in, uh, in, uh, in Finfjord. It's still quite small. We need to go up to, this is what, 150 uh, or uh, 300,000 liters, we need to go up to like 3, mil uh, 3 million liters or 3,000 cubics uh, for us to, be, to get to the volume that we want. And we need to have 20 of these uh, 3,000 cubic tanks for us to like at least uh, reduce the, the CO2 emissions by, by uh, 50%. But uh, we have come quite far uh, when it comes to like, uh, like industrializing this. Because uh, the biological, uh, we think we have less solved because we have the, the algae in culture throughout the year. So now it's about industrializing it. Um, the, the good news here is that we are not in this business actually to get a new ingredient for the salmon industry. Our main objective is to reduce CO2 costs for the ferrosilicon uh, business that we're doing. Uh, so we have quite a lot of stamina in actually driving this uh, project forward because we need a lot of development still. But uh, we are quite optimistic. Um, preliminary conclusions is again, uh, we see that the uh, biology is working. The, the algae thrive in these conditions. We have this tank is located in the center of the ferrosilicon complex. 
Um, they are not getting any like they're not getting uh, uh, poisonous when they are uh, uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, in the tanks. Um, they are uh, 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 they are also like uh, uh, absorbing the NOx gases in uh, in the uh, off gases, which means that we don't have to uh, add that much nitrate. Uh, and we also see a lot of other uh, positive benefits. For example, when it comes to health uh, and lice infestation. Um, I don't have the data with me here, but um, we have done two fairly big uh, uh, tests on lice infestations uh, on, the, on, the, on the salmon. Uh, the most comprehensive one was that actually took uh, salmon from, uh, from uh, like a, a very small stage until two years old. Uh, and then we introduced lice into control groups and uh, we had a 40% reduction. Uh, of, of the lice infestation with the group that uh, had a 5% uh, mix of, uh, of algae versus the control group. And then, uh, of course, we have also have other uh, uh, health benefits. And the reason behind that is actually we think that algae is actually uh, originally a, 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 a way that the salmon is feeding in, 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 in nature. Because uh, salmon feeds on uh, fish that is feeding on algae. So we're actually bringing uh, an, uh, an ingredient into the, the recipe that the, 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 the wild uh, salmon is originally uh, feeding on. Um, as you can see, I'm not, a bio, I'm not a biology background. I've been studying mathematics and physics, so now I'm clearly uh, out of my, well, let's say, uh, one, my knowledge base. Uh, when it comes to like uh, the barriers, oh sorry, uh, when it comes to like the potential in Norway, it's quite huge. If we succeed, then we see there's going to be a lot of other factories that will potentially take up this kind of, uh, of production. Uh, in Norway, we are quite big in uh, silicon production or ferrosilicon production. All of the, the, the facilities are located close to the, the, the coast, very close to to salmon production, uh, and if we can succeed, then all of these uh, installations can also succeed. So that means that Norway can produce uh, up to 700,000 tons of algae every year. When it comes to barriers, of course, there's the scale-up problem. We have scaled up three times when we, before, from we started this, uh, this uh, project, and we have another scale-up round before we have solved the issues that we are aware of today. So we need to like uh, to build a ten times uh, tank that we have, uh, and every time we have a scale up, then we know it's going to uh, end up in some some issues. Uh, today, the issues that we have is uh, the correct light, and also like how to introduce the off gases uh, as efficient as possible. Like the, the taller the tanks, the more energy will you will you have to use into compressing all the off gases for it to mix uh, thoroughly within the tanks. And what we're actually looking for here are uh, how to reduce the production cost uh, of, of algae. Because uh, when it comes to production cost, that's volume times uh, the actually operating cost of producing. Uh, we are also quite unsure about the value of the algae. Of course, we love the algae, so we have a quite a high expectations of uh, the value. Uh, of course, it's going to be limited by at least on the benefit it's going to do for the salmon industry. But this is a, a locally based, uh, sustainable, uh, health-inducing ingredient. So of course, uh, we think that the value is going to be reflecting that. But again, uh, bear in mind that we are trying to uh, actually remove two problems. So like one, removing one problem from the first silicon industry, and also like uh, uh, removing one on object from, from the salmon industry. Uh, the third part is actually converting the ferrosilicon plant into being able to, uh, to, uh, to direct all the off gases into a tank uh, facility, which means we have called it carbon capture ready. Because today we are uh, emitting all the off gases after being cleaned from, uh, from dust through a 200 meter, 200 meter long duct. So we need to make sure that we get all the off gases in a pipe. Uh, and we would also like, uh, like to remove all the sulfur before we get it in there. That's a project uh, that we have calculated to, to cost around uh, a billion wheating kroners. So it's going to be a big obstacle to make sure that we, we, we handle that before we can proceed. But the good thing, good news is that uh, we are really, really close to taking an investment decision uh, on the last part. 
uh, signaling like the, the belief that we have is that uh, this, uh, this is going to be a good project for us to become the world's first CO2-free for silicon producer, but also like solve problems in other industries, uh, which is the collaboration that you were talking about earlier. But this is a very unlikely one, I think. Thank you very much.